Hey everybody, Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. Hope you're having a good afternoon. I'm out exploring in Tater Tot, my lifted smart car, here in Fort Worth, Texas. Home of the very first fully automated McDonald's restaurant with a drive-thru and apparently also automated counter service. This will be interesting. Let's go check this out. No employees? Okay. So yeah guys, the drive-through looks normal like any other McDonald's drive-through. Out here we have mobile order curbside pickups. We have a McDelivery courier parking, two of those. I'm in a normal parking spot and uh, it says delivery driver pickup. Let's go to the front over here. All right, the drive-through wraps around here. Here's the inside. Here's the inside guys. This is the, the counter. There are technically employees working back there, so it's not fully automatic, but there are there are people back there. Our part is fully automatic over here. Okay, not sure what all this machinery is, but this is the kiosk to order. Oh, this is where you put your money in. I gotcha. Okay, so let's, uh, we're gonna skip the login to go orders, yes, because there's nowhere to sit in here. Let's say here. Let's say yes, I want the meal of nuggets. Regular honey. Regular honey. Go with Coke. And add to my order. No thanks. Good to go. And 794 is my number. There's my receipt. So the fully automatic thing. That's not quite true. Uh, there are not robots building the sandwiches, but this is a experience where we don't deal with any people. It's all automated for us, the customer. And then you get your bag, get your bag and get out and get back in your car, basically. But it's a normal kitchen McDonald's back there. By the way, the courier window, that door right there, there's a window right there. They just hand them to the people for DoorDash or whatever. I appreciate you, have a good day. You too. All right, and my order's done. No robots, though. All right, fries, nuggets, and some honey dipping sauce. So, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, that was not quite as cool as I thought. I have been very excited about visiting this place since I heard about it last December when it opened. So it's only been open five or six months now. And sadly, as is every social media post that is usually exaggerated a little bit, but still, oh, oh, Okay, cool experience. Uh, you can probably skip it. You saw it on my channel. Oh yeah, tasty. Let's actually, since we're here, let's see what the uh, drive through is like. See if there's a customer that's gonna come to the window or how that works. No thanks, can I just get a medium chocolate shake? All right, so that was just a normal person. Okay. Thanks, man. How good one? No, I see her hand out the window just handing them stuff. I think I was severely misinformed. It's all good. All good. Hello, hey there. Shake? Yeah, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. See you next time. Yep. Totally bummed out. I wanted a robot to, to deliver it to me. For reference, I want to show you a couple clips. I want to show you what they're advertising online. Yeah, so hear me out. If we're teased with some robot delivering your McDonald's food to your table, I mean, how cool would that really be? I don't know how far away that really is, but this is this is the allure of robots and stuff like that. When this news first hit, here's an actual newspaper article. Legit, look at that, and I quote, fully automated drive-through, fully automated. That means no people, not partially, but fully automated. And that simply was not the case today for us uh, in the lobby or in the drive-through. So what happened? What changed? These are some of the other previews and stuff we got from TikTokers and YouTubers and people saying that this is what happened. Again, I don't see any people. This is this is all robots. This is what I was expecting. How come this didn't happen? Well, it looks like they decided that they do need some human contact after all. So they actually shut down this window. This window still exists in the McDonald's, but we did not get to stop at that particular window because they opened up a second window and just handed it to us like a normal McDonald's. 
Wow, wow. Yeah, guys, here in uh, North Fort Worth, I think of Texas, and especially Fort Worth, cattle here at the uh, Stockyard, Stockyard Station, Stockyard District here in uh, North Fort Worth. We're gonna, we're gonna peek around. Oh, we got some horsies here. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Aren't you pretty? Aren't you pretty? Hi, guys. Oh, I'm doing some horse rides here, huh? Nice. Oh, yeah, you're showing some teeth. That's impressive. Thank you. It's a really neat little district. I can see lots of food that would have been a lot better than McDonald's. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, well. There's the stockyard station across the street. Here they've got a Cowtown cattle pen maze. Tickets you can buy, okay. There's a big uh, water tower here, and you can see the old tracks from, that's how they used to haul the cattle out of the stockyards here. Right through there, through the station. Looks like they do uh, train rides here. <laughs> and train rides for the adults, tours on a caboose. Well, let's check out the Stockyard Station Shopping and Dining District. I can smell those burgers from here. Oh man, I should have just waited. I wonder if I'll be able to find a Texas magnet today. Oh my, look at the kitty up there on the piece of driftwood. Oh yes, Tater Tot needs this on the front grill, guys. $299 for the small ones goes up to $550, $1,500. 2000 for that one and the top one says $3,500 another little kitty kitty oh my big cattle here and some buffalo or bison wow a water buffalo looks like like if you just cut off the horns he looks like a happy dog <laughs> you know holy cow he's smiling so that's at least good. I love all the squirrel art. He's fishing, he caught a fish. That's a, that's a hiking squirrel with a backpack full of nuts. And this guy is passed out. That is adorable. I'd switch that beer though. Pretty cool store is a gator eating a duck. And just look at all the wildlife all around. There's some tigers over there and a peacock and a $5,000 hippo. Wow. And they got some mini horns in here too. 60 bucks for those ones. Hmm. And I am finding a lot of Texas magnets, like the Happy Camper, uh, but I'm not finding anything that jumps out at me that says Texas Stockyards, you know? Like, I'm sure I've got plenty of Texas magnets. I wanted, I'm gonna keep looking. I'm gonna keep looking. They've got a Stockyard Station uh, Cadillac here on display. Pawnee Bill's Wild West Show. Okay. Yeah, classic. And you get to see what the horns look like mounted. That just says Texas. That just says Texas to me, you know? I love it. All right, I'm in another store looking for something. It does say Fort Worth, but you know, I'm gonna probably... Oh, ha ha. There we go, that's what I like. Magnets that represent exactly where I'm at. I'm getting that one. Oh, look at this pretty horse. Horse carriages. Nice. All right, here's something Texas for you. See these three canisters? Those are mobile air conditioners. They've got that white tent. They're hooking up portable air conditioning vents for the tent. I don't know what they're gonna be doing in the tent, but that is interesting. I like it. Oh, somebody brought their classic Chevy pickup truck. That is nice. Wow. It's pretty clean too. Mule Alley Maintenance. Might be a city truck even. That's nice. There's a Western store and I just keep, I just keep seeing these awesome looking steak houses and smelling really good food and I'll make it up to myself. I'll, I'll, I'll have a steak tonight. All right, let's at least check out the White Elephant Saloon here. See if we can find something in there and yeah, see what they got. All right, this is quite the bar saloon, guys. Look at all the cowboy hats on the roof. They all have names underneath the hats. So all these hats belong to different people. Heck yeah. And there's a, a stage behind me. Gotta have a barley pop here in the, in the stockyards. Ah, it's 
brisket. Look at the horns on this cattle. Wow. Wow. So he's 1,900 pounds. Wow. All right, buddy. Have a good day. Have a good day, bud. I had to. You can get your picture taken for five bucks. Ooh, tater tot would have been a lot warmer had I not remote started the air conditioner three blocks away with my phone. I love that. Stockyards were awesome. Let's do something else. Harm. I'm at the fight traffic on the way back tonight. Dallas Fort Worth traffic. I think the, 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 the kitties are fine in the RV. I gave them a day's worth of food and supplies just in case I end up not coming back to the RV because I'm a good hour and a half away from Dallas Fort Worth area. What we got here? A nicely restored uh, Sinclair gas station here. Not as early as some of the other ones I've been to. I love the two little dino crossings. I, I want to say this is probably 50s, not 30s era, but they have done a nice job. Sinclair, back in the old days, right? There's the service station where you can get your oil changed and get other things worked on and get your dino supremiums. Another nice old truck. We've seen a lot, a lot of these old trucks. I love that front grill. Man, that's pretty. And the wood platform with, hey, a dyno. I need him. I want him on my property. This is an actual re reproduced Sinclair service truck too. In pretty good condition, looks clean. And then a 70s uh, Dodge pickup here. Probably needs a tune up. Ooh, you know what? They did the inside too. They sure did. Look at this. Awesome. There's a little waiting area. Pretty cool. The air conditioning might be an add-on. Don't think that was there in the 50s, but still, it's pretty cool. Nicely done, guys. And they did win an award for the Fort Worth Historic Preservation. Nice. Oh, well, there's more. Around back, they got a few vehicles behind the uh, fence here. An old tow truck. Nice patina. It says on the side, King's Wrecking Yard. Graham, Texas. So that probably was a real wrecking yard. And then a couple of older uh, fire trucks here also. Oh, this one, fire truck front, but it's a flatbed tow for towing vehicles. Okay. Ooh, and it's also an old Exxon fuel truck back there. Nice. You know, I, I like my freestyle kind of life, although there are times where I have to make plans, buy tickets and pick certain dates and then pick a route. And then, you know, there, there certainly is some structure in my life. So I won't say that there's no structure because there is. However, I like the flexibility in, in my life. Uh, I've got the kitties taken care of. Like I mentioned, I am going to see if I can get a room here in the area. And then that way I can still stay up late tonight and do stuff. And then, and then also spend an extra day tomorrow. Maybe we'll go to Dallas tomorrow because we've only been in Fort Worth so far, right? Let me see what's available first. All right, got a room, got tater tot down there. And, uh, but don't worry, I'm still going out tonight. I'm actually hoping to meet up with a friend, grab dinner. Uh, this is my room. I don't stay in a whole lot of hotels because I'm not comfortable in them. I, I, I do it as a part of life because it gives me that flexibility, but um, this, okay, I, I met Super 8 in, in Fort, Fort Worth, and there's a reason why they had openings. When I first came in, I stood back here and thought, well, this isn't so bad. Then I looked over at the wall, came up close with my phone, and it was a big, hairy, nasty spider. It looks tiny on camera, but it was, it was about that big in, in real life. And, uh, you know, with the dark carpet, now I'm just like, this is a, I'm not gonna go on and on, but I'm not impressed. It is what it is. It's gonna be a place to sleep. However, should I be worried that there is no smoke detector? It's been completely removed. There's nothing else in my room. There is no smoke detector in here, anywhere, guys. <laughs> I've looked, I've checked. Uh, in the bathroom, this is actually the way it was. Toilet paper roll just sitting on the tub like that. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. Oh, that's because there is no toilet paper roll. Yes, there's poop smeared on the wall from the previous owner. 
uh -huh, and then poop stains all through here on the wall. Look underneath the toilet. There's the old dispenser for the toilet paper roll behind the toilet, okay? In the shower, I don't know what that weird mold grime is right there on the bottom. Not to mention the tile around the tub is full of mold also. There's even a surprise brown pube on the toilet seat. Now you even have to pay extra for that. Awesome! <laughs> Cracked light switch. Let's turn the fan on. Oh, she gone! <laughs> I haven't touched the uh, main sink here. There's some weird brown stuff in there. There's also blue or turquoise toothpaste on the counter still. They didn't even wipe the counters off. The bathroom door is complete, well, not completely unhinged, but it's holding on by a thread there. Do you think that's safe with the outlet sticking out of the wall like that? I've never seen anything like that. Uh, am I gonna get blamed for this huge hole in the wall? <laughs> what? And it's a non-smoking room that, as a non-smoker, I can instantly tell that someone has recently smoked in this room. I'm afraid to open this microwave because I can see something in the microwave. Oh, lovely. There's literally food. Look at that. There's an enchilada, half-eaten enchilada. It... All right, I got a new room. And I, and I was really, really nice about it, but I stated the facts and all the guests behind me were like, Ugh, uh, like hearing me say all these things, like, Ugh, hear everybody moaning. <laughs> now I'm on the ground floor. I got tater tot right outside my window, but I gotta head out, guys, because I'm gonna go meet a friend for dinner and have some steak. But this room looks exactly the same, except no rotten food in there and a lot less poop on, on the wall. By the way, I brought everything back out of my room and it's back in the car for dinner. That, that's how much faith and trust I have in everything right now. It's just a place to sleep later, so, so that I don't have to drive an hour and a half or even longer back to the kiddies tonight. But I left nothing in that room. There we go, just got parked. Texas Roadhouse. I can smell that steak and taters from here. All right, we're in and I got me some Texas Shiner Bock. This is not Shiner Lay, this is like full flavored stuff there. And it's tasty. <laughs> got some rolls there with that apple butter stuff and hanging out with my old friend Amber from Story Chasing. Remember Story Chasing? Now it's, now it's Amber Baldwin. She's having a salad. Everybody up How's your salad there? I do. I have my salad. <laughs> Talk yep. to you into that Shiner book. Yes, there. thank you. Good, good call. Good call. Yeah, we're gonna chill here and uh, catch up. Yeah. Heck yeah! I right, got my steak uh, medium well there with a side of taters and taters. I want to try out their two uh, gravies there. So, oh yeah. All right, back to my room. I am really stuffed. You can never go wrong with a Texas Roadhouse steak. It is so good. And I definitely prefer their white gravy sauce on mashed potatoes over their brown. I have to remember that for next time. Uh, I got the room, but I don't think I'm going to be ordering pizza like I normally do when I stay in rooms. I am literally cannot. Oh, we'll, we'll wait till later, though. I did again get to park tater tot right outside my room to keep an eye on things. So that's good. I think I'm about ready for bed, guys, so that I can go do uh, the Dallas area for my next video tomorrow, and you'll see that in a couple days. But I do want to point out, for reference, uh, again, I don't stay at the Super 8 in Fort Worth, Texas. However, I talked to a couple friends who know a little bit more about hotels and motels than I do, uh, both Amber and my friend Sean back in Illinois. And uh, price point-wise, I think Apparently, I should have spent more money. Um, this room goes for $54.99 a night normal, and it was running a special on Kayak for tonight, for one night, for one person, and one king-size bed. Uh, it was $38.99. So, again, you go back 10, 15 years, the last time, you know, I was staying, like normally I didn't have an RV back then, that was a normal rate. But here in 2023, if you're paying $38, $39 for a room, uh, my friends seem to think that I kind of get what I pay for. And uh, I I see it differently and I appreciate every people giving me that feedback. I know I'm gonna get a bunch of feedback in the comments of the video also, uh, but I just, I don't, I don't think that there, there's any excuse for the kind of condition that, that that first room was in. This room's not perfect either, but the first room was unacceptable. I mean, they literally 
looks like they didn't even clean it before the last people left. I mean, they made the bed, and then how do you not, not look in the microwave or the refrigerator, you know? Like, like. So, um, uh, apparently, moving forward, I have been told by multiple friends that I need to pay it, pay at least $80 a night uh, to not see conditions like that in the future. So, uh, good to know. 80 to 100 to 120 for a room when I have an RV is now we're starting to get past that range where it's not really practical. I'd rather just drive back to my RV and see my kitties. You know what I mean? And just eat the eat the gas money basically and deal with the traffic. So learned a lot. Might not be staying in a motel for a little bit. You guys have a good night. We'll do Dallas in the next one. Bye guys. Whoop.